Hello friends, I'm here to talk about a lesser known book called The Nature of Predators. Might have a little bit of trouble doing that though because, well there's no easy way to put this. There's an alien in my apartment now and he won't leave. I just need somewhere to crash for a couple of days while my ship is repaired. Why do you talk like that? Stop making fun of my accent. It's extremely racist. Well, if that's racism, then I guess I'm racist. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So I want to start off by saying that the nature of predators is fine. That's it? You know, it's not horrible as much as I may criticize it going forward, but like, it, there's some stuff in here that's kind of stupid and there's some stuff in here that doesn't make sense. I think it is all right. It is fine. It's okay. I don't regret spending time reading it. It has some really fascinating ideas mixed in there, and it made me think about, you know, human nature and what is our place in the world, what is our place in the wider universe, and that's what good science fiction is supposed to do. Exactly! Most science fiction is just about how cool it would be to meet us. But I want to know what happens when you meet us beyond just cool stuff. I don't want to just look at spaceships. I want to know how it changes society and how you view yourselves. Okay, you, can you at least leave me alone? I'm trying to film a thing. The basic concept of this book is that there are, you know, a bunch of other alien species out there, and at the very beginning of the book, <coughs> humans make contact with them for the first time. However, most alien species are herbivorous. Because on most planets, evolutionary pressure makes most uh, intelligent animals herbivorous, because being an herbivore and only eating plants, that encourages cooperation, whereas predators, that encourages uh, competition. I don't know if that logic really works, because, I mean, you look at some predators, like wolves, you know, they, they live in packs, they live in tight family units, but sure, whatever. The dogs work in relay. As one tars, another moves through to take up the running. And now there is no escape from the power of the pack. At the beginning, the humans run into this whole wider galactic community, and there is one predator race. There is one carnivorous race. They're called the Arxur. They're like lizard people. And they've been at war with all of the other races for quite a while now. And the other races are losing really badly because the Arxur are really aggressive and apparently can't be reasoned with. And they also are willing to take other intelligent life and turn them into cattle, you know, farm them. Well, that sucks. And then humans enter the mix, and others are shocked to find out that they aren't evil, because apparently they've never heard of omnivores. You know, apparently there's no other intelligent species, but also no other animal species that eats both plants and meat. You know, it's all either one or the other, which is strange to me, but sure, whatever. Uh, and actually a huge chunk of the book, and you can see, this, this is a thick one, uh, a huge chunk of the book is basically just everyone going, humans are evil! Oh, fuck off! Then they're going, well, no, we're, we're fine, and then just a series of misunderstandings causing them to continue believing that humans are evil, and it does get old pretty quick. And honestly, that's it. Like, that that's all that's in this book. It is a fascinating idea, but it's not really explored beyond the surface level, and there's not a whole lot of, like, plot or deep, complicated characters beyond that, you know? Like, the, the whole concept, I think, would be fine for a short story, but not for a novel that is, I mean, this copy is close to 500 pages long. It, it honestly just comes across as a humanity fuck yeah story that drags on way too long. And if you've seen my other video I did a couple years ago, you'll know I just don't like humanity fuck yeah stories to begin with. I agree. Humanity fuck yeah stories are terrible. Humans would never be able to fight that well. Okay, now who's being racist? Like I said, there's not a whole lot of complicated plot stuff going on. Uh, the characters just sort of exist, you know? Every one of them is there to prove some sort of point in the story, and that point is usually the same one, just that humans aren't evil. We're, we're perfectly fine. Are we the baddies? I mean, the only kind of interesting thing that I liked that came from characters in this book was that most of the herbivorous races are losing so badly to the Arxur because 
whenever the fighting starts, they run away really, really easily, whereas the humans are willing to stand their ground and even attack and be more aggressive. Pussy. And apparently the herbivores and the Arxor are like shocked and weirded out by that because they're like, whoa, people being aggressive in times of war. When has that ever happened? I mean, it's not like herbivores can ever get aggressive and defend their homes and territory and their offspring and things like that, you know? Look at these dinosaurs. Those are all herbivores and they seem perfectly passive. That's exactly what I would expect from a brain dead meat eater. You know, I keep forgetting you're there. I thought you were just like a one-off joke. You know, like I was just gonna put you in in the intro and then this was gonna be a regular review from that point forward. Now, I wanna say real quick that I do like sci-fi that is more about ideas than about being an actual story, because a lot of science fiction does fall into that category. Uh, and I don't think we get all that much of that these days. Although granted, I haven't read all that much modern sci-fi <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Like, the most recent, like, big science fiction series that I read was The Expanse. And while I do love The Expanse, that's not really what it is. It, it is like an actual story with plot and characters and world building and stuff. Whereas something like Children of Time, which I read a couple years ago, that is, again, kind of similar to Nature of Predators, that's more of an ideas book. You know, that, that's more about, hey, here's these interesting concepts, let's just spend some time exploring them, and all the characters that we're there with and the actual journey they go on is largely secondary, if that. But that said, Nature of Predators doesn't really explore the ideas enough to warrant reading it, I don't think. Because, like I said earlier, it brings up some interesting stuff, like, oh, okay, yeah, humans do eat meat. What, what do we have to say about that if most other intelligent races don't do that? And it just explores it at the most surface level ever, and we don't get much beyond that, you know? We could have gone into, like, the morality of eating meat. You know, I'm, I know a lot of vegetarians and vegans have very strong opinions on that. Nothing from you, motherfucker. But a lot of vegetarians and vegans have very strong opinions on that. And I, I, I mean, I personally don't care. <laughs> a lot of other people don't care because that's just how life is. You know, we, hu humans evolved to eat meat. That Biologically, that's what we're like. But this book could have done something with that. You need to leave! Or how being at war uh, for most of our history has helped or hindered our society. Because, like I said earlier, the herbivores are really bad at war because... Uh, again, apparently, even a regular animals on other planets just don't aggressively defend their own territory and don't try to defend themselves against predators. I, I guess they just run away or just hide. I don't know. Like I was saying, the herbivores are bad at war, but predators are willing to risk themselves, you know, because hunting, even at the best of times, hunting is a dangerous thing to do. You know, you're putting yourself at risk, but you have to put yourself at risk in order to go out and get food. You're not really putting yourself out at risk if you're just eating some leaves off of a tree. And I think that exploring that difference in how they're, not only they evolved physically, but how their societies and cultures came to their current point, that would have been really interesting, but we don't really do anything with that. There's one line from this book that I found really interesting that kind of relates to this. You don't understand because you've never known peace. Why would you have planetary defenses when all sapiens get along, as a rule? Why would you have warships if you never intended to use them? Humans had a very different experience on your world. And yeah, like, what if there was a society that had never known anything but peace and then suddenly they were hit with war and they had to figure out what this was like and try to survive it? That's not only an interesting story, but that has a lot of interesting ideas in it. You see, the very concept of peace is alien to you people. You know what? We're gonna have words after this. And by words, I mean, I'm gonna kick your ass. Because I don't think you can do anything about it. And I guess mild spoilers here, there is a big space war that breaks out in this, and that covers a big chunk of the book. But... I mean, I guess that's not even really spoilers, because the space war is already going on by the time the story begins and we find out about it really, really quickly. Uh, but there's just not much to say about that. You know, it's kind of like the book Invisible War that I did a video on not that long ago. 
we don't have that much idea of the capabilities of any of the sides that are fighting in this war. You know, for, for military science fiction to properly work, you need to understand what's going on. You need to understand the capabilities of each side, you know, stuff like numbers, uh, what sort of transportation and logistics they have, their weapons, you know, wh what can they do with these weapons, uh, how many of them are there, what's the geography of the area they're fighting in, you know, if they're up in space, then I guess it doesn't really matter because there's nothing out there, but if they're on the ground, like, does someone have the high ground, is there a river somewhere that's protecting them, I, like, you know, we need to have all of this information if we really are going to get into the fighting, and this doesn't do that. And I'm not saying it had to do that because, you know, clearly it's not trying to be military science fiction. Uh, the war is more of a backdrop for other stuff. It matter. <laughs> but that is still something worth mentioning. I don't know, I just, I, I don't have much else to say. Like, this book is, like I said, close to 500 pages long, and there's just not much here besides the concept. And the concept is thought-provoking, I'll give it that. It made me think, it made me stop, and it did give me some consideration, but it just fucking drags on and repeats a lot of information, and we're stuck spending time with characters who are obstinate, let's say. Like, they don't want to change their beliefs or anything, and it takes them a while to do that. I, I don't think I'd really recommend Nature of Predators to anyone. Like, if you're looking for <clears throat> something along those lines, I guess just find some humanity fuck yeah stories, but I don't really recommend those either. And I don't have much else to say. Does the alien have anything to say? I think the nature of predators sucks off humanity too much, and it just comes across as kitschy. Or maybe corny is a better word for it. I'm still learning your language. Okay, well, uh, that's it. Goodbye, everyone. Hello, I'm sick, but I need to get this filmed. So, uh, thank you for everyone for watching this far. Uh, thanks to all of my patrons whose names you see here on the screen. Special thanks to my $10 and up patrons, Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Brother Santodes, Carolina Clay, Ich Bin Longweilig, Kiana Arms, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Michael and Katie Hake, Proscriptions of Zhuo Jang, Rovi, Psych XS, Slumbering Jellyfish, Observing Outer Space, Tesla Shark, Toa Michael, Ve Victus, and Wesley. All of you are great. I love and appreciate all of you. If you want to get your name on here, consider donating. You also get early access to videos as well as some exclusive content. And if you don't feel like doing it on Patreon, you can also do it on my YouTube channel membership page. You won't get your name on here because YouTube doesn't really notify me when people <laughs> do that. But, you know, Whatever. Thanks for thanks for watching. If you didn't, if you don't feel like donating, just like the video, comment, subscribe. I appreciate that. My throat is sore. I need to stop talking now. Goodbye.